name is Nyawira Muturi. I'm an event organizer, but because of COVID, there are no longer events. So I changed my business. I do cleaning services and laundry services because I like cleaning. I like being hygienic. I'm passionate about that because being an endo warrior and suffering endometriosis, you have to be a clean person because it's not easy. I discovered that I have endo when I was diagnosed as a teenager. I woke up one day, I couldn't walk, I was thrown up, I had a fever. I was in so much pain, so I was rushed to hospital. Uh, they tried to check, they had to do urine tests. I had to be given a jab, like an epidural, so that the pain can go away. So after that, I went through tests. I had to be done an MRI. That's how I knew I have endo. I was never a sickly child. Maybe just the flu, the cold, normal things. But this really took me a blow because I was wondering what is happening to me. And most doctors uh, were not experienced with endo so like one doctor said maybe she's trying to have an abortion and that time you're still a virgin so you're wondering why would someone want to say such a thing no one in the family had gone through that so by the time i was diagnosed that i have endometriosis now that is when i started researching and trying to find out what's wrong with me and is it normal? Do other people have it? Okay, here in Kenya I could not get anything because I'm talking about early millennium, late 90s. So I got information from, I can say, abroad. The Western countries, they, they knew what endometriosis was and in America. There are so many changes that took place in my life because now I had to plan ahead so that I knew when my menses are about to come, I have to be prepared, I have to have enough sanitary towels because of the flow, I have to be near home or near a hospital. Your entertainment life, your social life, everything changes, your school life, you can't be like other girls. Like when people are swimming, maybe that is when you're really sick, you can't swim, you can't participate in sports you're just always sick and sometimes because of the flow you just want to isolate yourself mm -hmm. uh, like most of the time my life used to be in the washroom and people think you're weird but it's because of the flow because you can't keep on asking the teacher please can I go to the toilet and she's wondering you're not the first person to have periods in your life but you have to really prepare yourself mentally. You can go crazy because of the pain. You can go crazy because of the flow, because you're wondering if my sister is only using two packets of pads and I'm using like six during my menses, then there's something totally wrong with me. Most of the time, because I was never be, I was unable to attend school, so you're judged by teachers, you're judged by your fellow schoolmates. But I can say there are people who got to understand and they supported and then would have these um, sanitary towel companies who would come. So for me, I'd be happy because if the teacher chooses me to be the one to distribute the sanitary towels, I'll take as much as I can for myself because I know my situation. There are some friends who really were caring, like if you're not in school, they would take notes for you. If you're not, if you're sick, if you get sick in school, they will take care of you until maybe when you're picked up by your parents. So I can say there are some who are supportive and some who really didn't bother. Dating life was hard, I can say, because most women who suffer from endometriosis um, sex is a, is a painful ordeal. So sometimes your partner is wondering why you are you're like that, why you're feeling pain, how come the other girls don't feel pain. So it takes a toll on your relationship and once you start explaining to them that you have to go various through various tests to, to know your fertility rate, if it's now heading to the point of marriage. 
So like for me, I can say that's why I'm still single because I'm very open about my endometriosis. I don't like lying about it because I would not want to lie and then maybe it will affect my marriage life later. So I tell someone in good time, I tell them to even do their own research. So you find someone telling you, I don't think uh, our relationship can go that far if these are the causes of endo. So I can say it really affects you emotionally, socially, physically. Endo is a very expensive condition because even just seeing a guy now who understands endo, the consultation fee is quite high. So for me, because as a child I kept on seeing different gainers and I never ever got help because then the sensitization about endometriosis in Kenya was very, I can say low. So I, I got to a point when I was in my late teens, I met a retired nurse and to some point she had a way out. She was making juices from raw veg and because once you realize that endometriosis you it's like you get so many deficiencies during that time you get low iron because of the blood flow you can be low on potassium your energy levels are low because it really drains you so she had an idea of what to do and she started she started me on on the juices and i can say for a better part of my life those juices really helped because I had been on um, medication that, you know, uh, that makes you get hormonal imbalance, it affects your, even your personality. So I can say she really helped me and then from then on I kept on researching. So, so far I've been on natural medication for a very long time. The natural medication is not necessarily those juices because you have to also check yourself. So when I, uh, when I checked myself a year ago, my whole body was done for a body analysis. So I found out I have hormonal imbalance, my, my potassium, my iron. So you get to, to, to try and you get to know what will really help you. Like if your iron is low, your calcium is low, your magnesium is low, there's something like molasses, it really helps a lot. So me, instead of taking tea, because you, as an endo, milk is a no-go zone. So you have to be gluten-free. So I take my molasses instead of taking tea tea. So I just mix it in water and drink it, but I don't do it daily. So some days I will take stinging nettle because it will also help in my iron levels. It will also help in uh, clearing those clots. Then like once or twice a week I take activated charcoal which really helps as well. It really was able to remove the clots, so many of the clots and after that the pain reduced a bit. Then I also do something called a foot bath or a whole body bath. So I use various things like Epsom salt, apple cider vinegar, bicarbonate, and it really helps because when you're in pain, when your muscles are tight, you soak yourself, you feel better. I can say I have been really trying to do more research, read people's stories because it gives you encouragement. Because Actually, so many of them have gone through depression. Your mental health needs to be really stable. So listening to other people's stories, then you say, I'm not so sick and like so and so. So you compare yourself and you give yourself a heads up and you have to fight. What has kept me going is the fulfillment from the Bible in Isaiah that 33 verse 24 that one day that prophecy will be fulfilled that no resident will say that I am sick. That one day when God's kingdom comes to rule, that I'll wake up one day and I'll never feel the pain again of endometriosis. I'll never have to go through buying so many sanitary towels that sometimes empties your pocket.
or I will not have that heavy flow of blood anymore. I'll not miss curry painkillers, pads. In fact, most of my relatives and friends, they know. If your period starts, you don't have a pad, they know Nyawira has. If you have, if you're having a headache, my bag is a first aid kit. You will find all those things. You will find a, 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 a flannel. If I can be able to get hot water somewhere, I will use it. Just put it on my stomach so that the pain can reduce. Yeah, normally I have everything and I put in different places, in the washroom, in the bedroom. The annoying words that you're given, you're told that only child birth, which is very primitive because so many women have given birth and they are still suffering from endometriosis. And also, you know, maybe you're disposing your sanitary towels, especially like in school or you're visiting a relative or something and people are like, Hi, umetumia hizo zote. Are you normal? My dream is to create more awareness on endometriosis. Make sure that people know, even especially in the villages, in schools, because most young girls get it when they are very in their teens and they don't know what is happening, teachers judge them, their fellow students judge them, they are judged at home, you're told you're lazy, you're told you're pretending. So it's more of creating awareness that this thing is real and it's a very serious condition. If they can reduce prices for parts because it's also an expensive affair for women with endometriosis. Mm -hmm. Or we can get them free in hospitals, whether it's public hospitals or private hospitals. It would really help. The last word to men is try and find out more about this disease. Support your spouses, support your daughters, take them to hospital. This disease really needs so much support. I thank my late dad because most of the time he's the one who took me to hospital. I hope that one day there'll be a cure. And if not a cure, that the awareness will be spread that you don't have to get sick in front of people and people are looking at you like, are you the first one to be on your periods? For people to understand, people to know how they can help someone suffering from endometriosis.